hi all welcome back to my channel by spark pulse so in this video we'll be discussing tcs interview questions for experience of four years sky with a ctc of 15 lpa and as a data engineer so here are some questions which i want to discuss some of the critical questions and at the end of uh, this video i will be discussing some uh, by spark question as well okay uh, the one he asked to write so this was a common question like what is the difference between rdd data frame and data sets okay so according to the feature i have differentiated uh, all these things for example abstraction level this is low level and a very low level uh, kind of you know functional programming at uh, it is kind of you know at the lowest level of spark we can code then this is the higher level like tableau or form in pyrodance we can get data frame it is combination of both and it have both java scala and python they also have for data set we only have java and java and scala right performance wise it is very slow it is optimized and it optimized with type safety right it has no schema it has a schema and it also has a schema right no optimization it has like some optimization we can do right uh, in transformation level as well as you know in the spark level the catalyst optimization tunks and execution all this uh, are automatically done by spark in type safety it is no for both these cases but for this case it is yes for data set it is yes for use case like when we want you know find gain access control over our data then we can go with rdd for sql like operation we can go with data frame and we want a strongly typed data then we can you know go with data sets then how does spark perform lazy evaluation so this is a very easy question and uh, in some of the interviews you might get this one of the common question like transformation of not executed immediately and actions triggered execution right so this is how is spark perform lazily so whatever code we have written spark will not uh, execute until and unless an action keyword such as collect show is called the above transformation will only be getting executed once an action word is called right it, it, because, why it does so because it optimizes the query plans before execution right why transformation versus action by spark so you can see transformations uh, are lazy return new rdds data frames some examples are there map filter select and actions are like triggering execution show count and collect right then why do we use spark context and spark session generally we use spark context when we are you know working with older version of spark when we are using rdds right and we are using a spark session when we are working with unified api data frame sql data set then we are generally you know getting we are importing this from pyspark.sql and it also comes uh, spark context comes in built in it then uh, how does pyspark handle schema inference like for certain data types csv json parquet avro you know which have the inbuilt schema right it infers some of the the rows like we can give that value as well right and it can infer the schema spark it that smart then we can also explicitly define the schema using struct type uh, as the pythonic way and also using the ddl way Move to, moving to the next question what are broadcast variable and when we should use it so broadcast variables are the variables which would be kept in the worker nodes like cache in the worker nodes right uh, and this should be used when we when the size is smaller right when uh, when the small uh, lookup table is there and we want to you know reduce the shuffling operations then we should go with broadcast in the variable then how do you optimize joins by spark then we can use broadcast for small table sort merge join for large data sets or uh, shuffle hash join when one data set fits in memory so uh, bucketed joins so all this kind of optimization can be used for the uh, optimization can be used in the by spark right then what are shuffle operation and how to minimize it a uh, shuffle operation occurs during you know when we are uh, the data is shuffled from one uh, okay just give me a second i will just plug in the charger my laptop is getting discharged so we were here discussing this question and yeah we discussed like you know when this uh, shuffle operation occurs like when we are using white transformation or when we are using reduce by key such operations are there right data movement across the nodes how to minimize shuffle we can use collage instead of repartition it will minimize shuffling using broadcasting of a small data sets 
avoid unnecessary you know white transformation and use map side joints instead of supple joints so this can be some of the ways to minimize uh, shuffling next question is what is partition and how does it impact performance so partition partitioning is the you know uh, key in big data world right how we partition our data it is a uh, actually style by which we can you know improve our performance improve our system performance if we have very less partition then it will lead to data skew if we have many partition it will lead to high overhead so we need to get the exact number of partition which will be suitable according to our uh, system configuration and according to our uh, use case right so according to that we need to decide do r and d and decide number of partition right we can use collage to optimize the partition right then what when you should use cache persistent why cache like uh, it stores data in memory only when we have uh, enough memory we know then we can go with cache otherwise when we have you know uh, when we think our data might spill then we can use persist and we can also use persist when data is too large from that, that that is what i said right so this is the example and you know some uh, in the tabular form i tried to show how when when to use in the storage level when it stores data in memory it can store data in memory and disk or both memory and disk only disk only so we can give persistence level then recalculation avoid recomputation avoid recomputation with flexibility so this is the thing when data fits in the memory it is too large for the memory. so this is the use case for cache and persist then these two other ways i just showed how we can use uh, while coding then this was the question asked in AWS side, different between EMR and AWS Glue. You can see the purpose is big data processing for both, but it is you know, more as a serverless kind of ETL, right? Then it requires cluster setup. It is fully managed. This is you know kind of manual. We can decide how much uh, memory we want, what kind of uh, uh, software we want. So everything we can do, right? It can be manually, uh, manually or auto, manual or auto scaling. It is auto scaling, like right? fully serverless. Then pay as go, you know, pay for it to instead of whatever we have used. It is pay as per use pricing. Then highly customizable, we can decide, you know, what kind of uh, big data environment we want. It is limited customization. Uh, use case, we can see batch processing. And again, it is for retail jobs. Data cataloging, schema discovering, ML work. So you can go through this. And if you want this uh, PPT, you can DM me, DM me on LinkedIn as well. Then this was another question use of aws lambda in my project so there can be different use cases of aws lambda it depends on your project there can be you know for triggering of uh, certain pipelines uh, on the basis of arrival of file uh, maybe triggering of some other pipeline maybe some running ad hoc queries but we need to uh, make sure like it only works for 15 minutes yeah so let's now discuss some uh, pyspark written question that was asked okay so now let's go with the uh, uh, PySpark question that was asked to him. So in total, there were three question, two were PySpark question and one was a SQL question. So in this video, since it will be a little long and I want to create video under 10 minutes, I will be explaining only one PySpark question. And in the next video, I will be explaining the other two question. So, so the question was like, we are having, this is a very easy question. For example, like we are having employee data frame with name as salary as a column. And we want the average salary of all the employees whose first name starts with A. So let's try to create a data frame. You can see this is the basic code that I have written. Let me run this. Now our data frame is created. Now let's visualize the data frame. Employee data frame dot show. So we can share a data frame okay now according to this output we'll be writing our code so we will be writing like average average df average cell df is equal to from the employee df first of all what we want to do we want to filter out right we should be filtering out filter what the column name which starts with a right and uh, we will just show this as well
this is not the final output but just a visualization of the half thing so we got the output as expected right now what we want to do we need to aggregate this aggregate on what average on which column column salary right and we will be just show this so this is like average salary let me alias this okay we will change the name of this column dot alias as average salary right so this was one of the easy question that was asked the other question was like suppose in some data frame we have some corrupt data and you want to depress reprocess that code or uh, reprocess that data and write code snippet to perform the operation explain the logic right so this was the question reprocess the uh, data right so what can be the logic of this anyways let me change it to markdown so i will just give you some hint and i want uh, you know uh, you to answer me in the comment section dm me and check it so first is like we need to uh, understand what what is the corrupt data what is the corrupt data according to the uh, use case right maybe some null values null duplicates or like uh, data type change you know, data type uh, or data type changes something like that so this can be you know corruption of data second thing what we need to do we need to filter the data out right filter the data filter the corrupted data out just a wild guess which i am taking um, i was not you know uh, filter the corrupted data out I didn't know what interview said no what should be logic this was just a question i got from one of my friend right we need to filter out the corrupted data then we need to you know uh, for the corrupted data we need to manipulate the values right? for the corrupt data we need to manipulate the values the values or in the second step only we can just you know uh, drop the records But in certain cases, we need to manipulate the values as well. For example, in case of null values, right? Then what we need to do, we need to merge both our data frame, the uh, filtered data frame and the clean data frame, right? Merge both the filtered and clean data frame. So according to this logic, try to give me uh, a code snippet and we will be discussing in the next video so do follow me and subscribe to my channel and let me know how you like this video and for the ppt uh, please let me know uh, ping me in my linkedin or yeah for the ppt thank you